Hello folks, Dick Fairburn here, talking about elk hunting, but what I'm going to talk about now is windage correction for shots, especially shots that are going to be pushing out to a little bit of long range. Here's an example. This is my 280. I have basically two big game rifles. A 280 for deer, antelope, sheep sized creatures. But with the premium 160 grain bullet, I would not be afraid to take this on an elk hunt. And I think even a big bull, if you get a good hit on him, it's going to handle the situation. But this is lighter recoiling. It's the most accurate, right? One of the most accurate rifles I've ever had. So I can reach out to longer distances. You know, when, when we're done elk hunting out in Wyoming this, this winter, if we get a chance to uh, move around the state a little bit and find some wolves, I'd sure like to get a wolf out there. And if I get a six or 700 yard shot on a wolf, the kind of conditions where I can get really solid, measure the range, estimate the wind, I might push out that far and, and take a poke at him. I'll be doing that with this 280. So I'm going to show you a ways how to correct my wind. You can even dial your windage knob over here. Most people tend to hold. They're going to hold off into the wind because the wind can vary so much from one second to another almost. It can go from 10 to 0, back to 5, to 0, to 10. It's hard to dial in one particular number and then work off of that. It's better to have tick marks on your reticle that allow you to hold off into the wind. But you need to know how much to hold. You run out your ballistic chart on a computer, it's going to give you windage values. It's going to give them to you probably in inches, and then whatever angular system you use, minutes of angle or mil radians. I'm going to tell you a real simple formula that I got taught by a Marine on how to calculate these numbers in your head. But you may have to refer to that wind, that wind table, and they are generally based on a full value 10 mile per hour wind. Now, full value wind means it is 90 degrees perpendicular to your angle of shot. That's maximum effect of the, of the wind. It's done for 10 miles an hour so that we can kind of vary it from there. If it's five, we do half. If it's 20, we do double. If the wind is not a full value, 90 degrees from left to right, then we have to factor in, a, you know, if it's maybe a 45 degree angle, then it's a half value wind. If the wind is directly in your face or directly behind you, it really has no lateral adjustment necessary. On extreme shots, you may have to worry about the wind speeding up or slowing down your bullet, which could give you some very slight elevation changes. Another wind that, that is not all that unusual out west, and a lot of people don't think to factor in, is the thermals that rise every day. If you have a decent, especially sunny day out west, once the ground starts to warm, the wind direction is going to go up the face of the mountain. The thermals are going to rise. That's a wind value. And if you have a substantial, if you have like a 10 mile an hour up wind, then we have to factor that into our elevation corrections. That's why I say, in my opinion, 600 yard shots on a game animal really should be about the limit. Now I know there's a lot, you'll see a lot of videos on TV of killing stuff out there at, you know, 1,000 yards, 1,200 yards. There are so many variables involved I frankly just kind of find it hard to believe. We're, we're seeing those perfect one-shot kills, high shoulder shots, dumps an elk at 1,200 yards, rolls down the mountain. And I'm not saying they're unethical, and I'm not saying they're lying, but I can tell you that unquestionably there are some of those shots that are muffed. And the game is lost, or the game is badly wounded and has to be tracked a very long ways. It suffers a lot in the process. When you're working at those extreme ranges, you really can't dial out all of the variables. That's why long range military snipers have spotters because the chance of making that first round hit out there and you know and some of these shots are being made at 27, 2800 yards, the chances of a first round hit are almost zero. So they spotter calls the shot, they adapt for the second shot both in elevation and windage and they try to get their shots in there. But a first round hit at extreme ranges like that 
becomes a little hard to believe, I think. So 600 yards is, is reasonable. So I'm gonna go back in the shop. I'm, uh, we're gonna talk about windage. I'm gonna show you some different ways to correct for it and different ways to calculate it. And you can learn to deal with it. Talk to any experienced competitive shooter. They will tell you they don't worry about elevation hardly at all. That's a known science. The computer can predict it very accurately. But wind is not a science. Wind is an art. And to beat the wind, which could be coming from one direction at your location and the opposite location where the critter is, that just takes experience. So the more you can get out in that open country and shoot targets at those longer ranges, the better you're going to be at dealing with the wind. See you back in the shop. Okay, here's a range table I ran in JBM Ballistics, um, the free web page you can use to do ballistic calculations. This is for my 338 Winchester Magnum, 225 grain Acubon bullet, 2800 feet per second. I set the elevation for about 6500 feet, and I've got it out to 600 yards. So you can see the drop in inches. Here's drop minutes of angle. Windage in inches and windage in minutes of angle. Now you can do these in mil radians just as easily as you can minutes of angle. So if you're using a mil dot scope or, or mil ha with hash marks, you can use either system. So probably this is going to be printed on a piece of paper, taped on the side of your stock. If you're working at 400 yards, all these wind values are based on a full value 10 mile an hour wind. Full value means 90 degrees, as I mentioned, perpendicular to your angle of shot. So at 400 yards, if we're sitting in a full value 10 mile per hour wind, it's going to blow the bullet about 8.5 inches. We're going to need two minutes of angle correction. And as I alluded to earlier, dialing in those corrections on your windage dial are difficult because the wind very rarely stays at a constant velocity. It, it tends to go up and down a little bit and we need to be able to adapt to that. That's why it's better to use holdover kind of stuff. So different methods to hold off. This is a loophole duplex reticle. Almost everyone makes a, a, a duplex type of reticle. I mentioned earlier on the elevation video I made, the 3.5 to 10x loophole scope is made with a narrow thin section. And this was made for police sniping in many respects. This thin section is 5.1 minutes of angle, or 2.55 for half of it. We're going to call it 2.5. So if you need 2.5 minutes of correction, then that would be your aiming point, or the opposite side. If you got a wind coming from the left toward the right, it's going to blow the bullet towards the right, then we're going to take that right point and use that for our aiming point. If it's five minutes, well, you need about double, so we're going to be in there. But I will tell you that five minutes of wind correction is a lot. If you are needing that much wind correction, you might want to consider getting a whole lot closer because that's going to be a tough wind to deal with. Now here's the downside. You need to know that thin section opening for your scope. Loophole publishes theirs. Most of the others do as well. If nothing else, call the scope manufacturer you have, ask for their technical support, and get the distance. As an example, if you buy a Leupold VX5 HD scope, pretty expensive scope, $1,600, $1,800, that thin section is just expanded out to 9.4 minutes of angle. So half of that is going to be 4.7. We're, we're at maximum wind correction there for 4.7, but it is still a yardstick. 2.35 would be half of it, so you got something that you can use on a duplex reticle. As long as you know the value of the minutes of angle from center to either one of those horizontal posts. Now we're looking at the Boone and Crockett reticle. This is a holdover style reticle. So you have secondary aiming points at 300, 400, 450, and 500. The distance is still about 2.5 minutes of angle from the center to either of these tips. So they've held that distance constant. That makes it very handy to use for wind. If you need two and a half minutes of correction, you simply dial there. These lines at three and four have been made this size specifically. This is for a 10 mile per hour full value wind. So you can hold, if you have a wind blowing from the left, 
toward the right, it's going to blow the bullet towards the right. Then you move your aiming point over to here, and that's going to be good for 10 miles per hour. The same down here at 400 yards, you, you see that's a little bit wider bar. But also you have that two and a half minutes of angle that you can use. Now this has to be used at maximum magnification because it's a second focal plane reticle. Those values are only accurate at maximum magnification. Now we have, in my opinion, the best kind of reticle for long distance hunting. This is Leupold's TMOA reticle, tactical minute of angle. They make an identical one in mil radians. Each hash mark is a, mi is a minute of angle. I believe in the uh, mil radian, it's a half a mil. So you can, you can have system either way. This allows us individual minutes of angle hold off left and right for the wind. So if I'm dealing with a two minute of angle wind from the left toward the right, I'm going to come over two. That's my aiming point right there. And I'm going to get a good hit. Again, this is a second focal plane reticle. And so you're going to have to be working at maximum magnification. Now, if you have another brand of scope, if you have something that uses first focal plane, then these graduations in here, whether it's mils, minutes of angle, they're going to be accurate at any magnification, at any zoom setting with that scope. Those will represent one minute of angle or one half mil, depending on the kind of scope you're using. But this allows very fine hold off for the wind. Now I'm going to explain the marine wind formula that I was taught in a NRA police rifle instructor class a number of years ago by a retired marine warrant officer. What he did in this, in this class was teach us how to break the wind down into a wind factor for your individual cartridge. I'll show you a formula here in a minute. But let's, let's go to 600 yards, and we can see here that you need 3.2 minutes of angle correction. Here's the formula to develop the wind factor, and once you know the wind factor, you can work in, in your head the number of minutes of angle of correction you need. So you don't necessarily need that piece of paper stuck to your stock, or perhaps it was stuck there and got torn off. Now you can use this system to, uh, to give you the wind correction you need. The formula runs like this. You use the distance to the target in hundreds of yards. So I mentioned earlier, we're gonna work it out for 600 yards. So that means you use a value of six hundreds of yards times the wind speed in miles per hour. And our formula is set up for 10 mile an hour winds. So six times 10 is 60 on the top part of this formula. You divide by the wind factor. And I can tell you right now, the wind factor for this load is 20. Six hundreds of yards, 10 miles per hour, divided by a wind factor of 20. It, it, it works out to 18.75, but we round these things off. And I'll show you how to, how to calculate that in a minute. Six times 10 is 60, divided by 20 is three. Three minutes of angle will give us our correction. The actual value on the range table is 3.2. That's close enough. So once again, work this in your head. If you know the wind factor for your load is 20, let's say I'm now I'm looking at 300 yards. So three times 10 miles per hour is 30. Divided by 20 is 1.5. And when we go back to the range table, you're gonna see it's smack on. So learning this wind factor is a very valuable, very easy, very quick way to determine how much correction you need for the wind. So here we see, I did. I said six hundreds of yards times 10 miles per hour. You, do, you take this number and divide it into the 60 and you'll come up with that wind factor formula. So that's how you find the wind factor formula. We can do the same thing at 300 yards. 30 divided by 1.5 is 20 and that becomes our wind factor. So now that I have that wind factor in my mind, if I'm at 450 yards, I have a 10 mile per hour wind that's 45 divided by 20 is two and a quarter, roughly. 450, 10 miles per hour of wind. I said two and a quarter, it's 2.3. That's close enough for what we're doing. For an M16 style rifle, you get a wind factor of about 10. For a 7.62 by 51, like an M14 or, or an AR-10 rifle, 
the wind factor works out to about 15. For a nice shooting flat round like this 338 wind mag, the wind factor works out to 20. Now we can calculate that, as I said, 6 times 10 is 60. We divide it by 3.2, it's actually 18.7 over here, but we're going to call that 20. So at 100 yards, 1 times 10 is 10, divided by our wind factor of 20 is half minute of angle. At 300, 3 times 10 is 30, 30 divided by 20 is 1.5 minutes of angle. At 600, 6 times 10 is 60, divided by 20 is 3 minutes of angle. Now, if you want to go past 600 yards, you may have to, you see that wind factor starting to break down because the wind is having more effect over a longer range. But out to five or 600 yards, this thing is spooky accurate and it's very easy to run in your head. So let's summarize this. Two ways to, to get the value you need in terms of correction. It's easier to use in minutes of angle than inches because minutes of angle are an angular measurement. They're gonna, they're gonna match your reticle. If you're working in mill radians, then you're going to get a mill correction, and it's going to match your mill reticle. You can print out your range table. You can tape it to the side of your stock, and then refer to that for distance. This is always based on a 10 mile per hour full value wind. So you got to factor in. If you've got a 10 mile per hour wind, you're at 600 yards, but you think the wind is coming at about a 45 degree angle, that's a half value. Cut that in half to 30 for a half value wind. 30 divided by the wind factor of 20 is one and a half minutes of angle. And now you look to your reticle and see where you're gonna hold off to get that one and a half minutes of correction that you need. So range table gives you the value or you can work it in your head with that wind factor using the marine formula. Now that makes it sound really simple. The problem is the wind is rarely 10 miles per hour, exactly. The wind is rarely a full value, 90 degree to your angle of fire, exactly. And the wind is very rarely constant from your location to the target location. It can vary back and forth. It can be blowing from the left where you are and actually be blowing from the right when you get to the target. If there is a change in the direction, the closer it is to you, the more effect it's going to have. If it's, if it's a, a shift in the wind direction close to the target, that's going to have very little wind effect. So the art to this is learning to read the wind, looking at grass, looking at leaves. Perhaps there's snow that's blowing. If you've got, if you've got a light powdery snow that's blowing, you've got a pretty substantial wind. The easiest way to estimate the wind is to use a wind meter. There are a number of them out there. I use a, a, an inexpensive Caldwell wind meter. The Kestrels are probably the best. They can, uh, the, the top end Kestrels are full ballistic machines that will even Bluetooth to other equipment. They can be very expensive. Military grade snipers are using that kind of equipment. High level, long range competitors are using that kind of Kestrel equipment. If you wanna, if you wanna buy it and learn how to use it for hunting, that's great but the simpler stuff will give you a pretty good idea. Get out in those open areas, get out where you have wind speeds to deal with, and simply learn how to read it. It's not easy, but it's not complicated. It's just a matter of fine-tuning, looking at the situation and saying, yeah, it's a full value, and my wind meter says it's a 10 where I am here, but I'm seeing the grass out there by the elk almost going the other direction. That's going to cancel some of that out, and now it's an art. Instead of three minutes of, of correction, I think maybe it's two minutes of angle. Call your shot, and ideally, you're not hunting alone, and you've got somebody that can help you spot your shots and tell you if it was a good hit, a clean miss, or worst case scenario, you wounded an animal. Hopefully, this has uh, given you some good information on how to deal with the wind. Uh, put your comments below and on your experiences in reading wind because it's not an easy thing to accomplish sometimes. Thank you for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Okay, we got them both here now. You ready? Bud got one. Ginger got one. Uh huh. Oh, she missed it. She usually gets them, doesn't she, Bud? Mm -hmm. Okay, girl. Last one. Ready? You ready? Yeah. That's all there is till next time.